Is the cost of living crisis, the rising rates, and I, I know they're very different issues, but when people are bat battling around the kitchen table, do, do you, are you worried about the fact that a lot of people won't have the bandwidth to say, OK, I'm open to what this is, all, what this is all about? I'm, I'm too busy trying to feed my kids. Look, of course, uh, for Australians, cost of living pressures are being felt here, as they are around the world. Uh, we have, as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, as well as supply chain issues post-COVID, uh, we've seen a rise in global inflation and increased pressures on the economy. But on areas, of course, of GDP growth, on employment growth, on all of these uh, factors, uh, Australia is better than any of the G7 countries going forward. But we understand cost of living pressures. One of the things that we did with our budget was make sure that we had energy price relief, that we had the uh, Medicare strengthening changes that will give access to bulk billing to 11 million Australians, that Australians will benefit from the cheaper medicines that we put forward. Cheaper childcare begins on July 1. Uh, we are taking a range of measures as well as at the same time, of course, we're starting to see those wage increases that are making a difference to people. And so we understand all of that, but at the same time, we think that Australians will have the opportunity uh, to vote uh, in the referendum and they'll give it uh, consideration and come up with uh, their, their decision. Uh, we respect people uh, to be able to do that and we want to make sure that people vote on the basis of the facts uh, rather than some of the misinformation which is out there. You made some interesting comments on, on Friday where you said you wanted, if it does get up, to get consensus as much as possible in the parliament so that the, the voice lasts, basically, that you get as much bipartisanship after the vote. Is that essentially you saying, OK, here's an olive branch. If, if this does get up, we need to find a way to to bring everyone together on this? Well, I said that months ago, of course, uh, to the leader of the Liberal Party, to the leader of the National Party as well. Uh, of course, the parliament uh, can change legislation at any time uh, affecting the voice. Uh, but what we want to do is to get as much consensus as possible around the structure and the functions and operation of the voice, including over its composition and uh, the, the final format. Uh, how many people will be on The Voice, for example. But I should imagine over a period of time that will be improved as well. Uh, but uh, I see this as uh, being similar to the apology. Now, the apology was called for from the end of the last century, from the Bringing Them Home uh, report. And for years it was resisted. And it was said that it would be divisive and... Of course, uh, we, we know that Peter Dutton has apologised for walking out uh, on the voice, uh, on the uh, apology that occurred. Uh, so uh, we, we know that uh, that was a moment of national unity. The scare campaigns uh, weren't right. It didn't result in uh, big compensation claims. It didn't have uh, an impact on most Australians, except they felt better about who we were as a country because the wrong thing had been done, uh, sometimes with good intentions, but it was an apology. And just like uh, we teach our kids to, if something goes wrong, say sorry, because that's a key to being able to move on. And the country moved on. If we recognise uh, Indigenous Australians in our constitution, and people will look back at it and say, oh, why didn't we do it earlier? Just like people say, why didn't we make the apology earlier? On some other matters, you gave the Greens housing spokesperson a bit of a gobful in the parliament this week. W would you be willing to fight a double dissolution election on this issue if need be? Well, we think that uh, parliament needs to pass this legislation. Uh, we know that there's effectively been uh, a blocking of the legislation by, by it being deferred on more than one occasion. And this is good legislation. And I think the Greens' position was exposed this week 
when their spokesperson uh, published uh, 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 in writing a piece essentially talking about the politics of this issue and how it enabled them to have a campaign opportunity. This isn't a campaign opportunity. This should be a policy solution. And we need to build more houses and we need to fix housing supply. I firmly believe that governments should serve their full term. That's my starting position. Uh, but uh, we will wait and see uh, what the Greens political party choose to do. Uh, they're saying that they won't vote for the legislation until something they know is not going to happen uh, occurs. All state premiers and chief ministers are focused on supply and they know that that's the key to fixing affordability and to assisting people who are renting.